What's up everyone, my name is Pierce. I use Krita. When I initially started using Krita, I was like, this UI is so bad. Not that it's bad, it's just not my taste. Their design philosophy is to have everything in front of you at once so you can just one click things in order to get the thing you need. But I have found that always to be a little bit distracting. So I have worked refining my Krita setup to be kind of using the same design philosophy as Procreate where you have little buttons that will bring up much larger options. Let's get to it. Here's what you're gonna start with. You're gonna download three plugins, the Krita Theme Creator, Tayla, and Krita Redesign. I'll link those below, but essentially this is the download here. Once you have those downloaded, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Tools, Scripts, Import Python Plugin from File, I did save it on my desktop here and you'll have three zip files and you're going to want to open all of those and it's going to ask you to enable them now and we're going to have to restart so restart and once we launch it again the plugins will all be enabled and we'll have all their features the next thing that we're going to focus on then is we're going to update our dockers the so dockers are a unique thing in Krita. It's essentially all of these. You can move them around, customize them, and the way that you can customize them is you go up to settings, dockers, and then just we're gonna start by just turning them all off. So now we're here. We're at a very like somewhat blank looking setup. I have found that layers is probably the most important as well as tool options. And I usually like to put those two together like this. And then you can do this. I also have the brush preset history. So I can go back and pick the brushes really easily. Next step is we're gonna go to view and we're gonna turn off show status bar, which is that little bar at the bottom that shows a bunch of file information that's not really usable unless if you're really deep in the files. Also, you might notice this is here. This automatically enabled. This is our new toolbox. It's the, I'm forgetting the name. It's the plugin we installed. It's essentially a much more refined toolbox that is closer to your hand when you're drawing. And you can just right click to access all of the different tools. Now we're going to do toolbars. It took me so long to also realize that the Krita toolbar is not a docker it's like its own class but you do access it the same way so you have configure toolbars toolbar shown so right now file and brushes and stuff are the default ones we're going to click configure toolbars we're going to start with the main toolbar which it usually just has new open save but i usually just access those from the files we're going to get rid of these and then I had it down here. We're just gonna have painter's tools and brush composite. So what these do is this allows you to edit your brush on the fly without having to bring up all of the different like brush preset details, mimicking Procreate and that you have little buttons that bring up much bigger menus. But the purpose of this is to make it cleaner so that the focus is on the painting and not on the UI. Now we're gonna go again into configure toolbars, but this time we're gonna do brushes and stuff. And this one's pretty complicated because you're essentially making an entirely new toolbar that has opacity, brush size, etc. Similar to Procreate, how they have that little bar on the side. Unfortunately, Krita doesn't let you put it on the side with the bars because they'll just they'll extend out to like right there. So you have to have it on top. This is what you want. Hide file, expanding spacer, set eraser, all that. So first one is hide file. This lets you hide that file toolbar we just made on the fly, but you will need to open, you'll need to open it again before you close or else there's a glitch within Krita that makes it so it just disappears. I don't know why. Set eraser mode essentially allows you to toggle your brush from eraser to brush if you're using your computer in tablet mode and don't have access to a keyboard. Brush option slider one. 
and brush option slider two. That's gonna be our opacity and our brush size. And you're not gonna do eyedropper. Eyedropper, when you select the eyedropper tool, it locks in the eyedropper tool and it doesn't automatically switch back. What you're gonna want to get is the sample screen color sample real canvas. For some reason, the way they coded this, it automatically switches back to your last used tool. So if you have a brush and you wanna just quickly select the color, kind of like alt click, it lets you do that. Versus the color sampler, it locks you into the color sampler tool until you select a different tool. These I found, I just, you can honestly just put what you want for these. I find I use vertical mirror tools and horizontal mirror tools an insane amount. You can put whatever you want. And then the show dockers is a really, really awesome thing. Oh, and you're also going to want to grab this show docker title bar real quick. And I'll show you why. This is a hidden hidden secret within Krita that I could not figure out earlier. So show dockers automatically hides and shows them. So like Krita, it's like the layers icon. You do have to click it again to hide it, but we can also set it up so that when we tab, it automatically hides them. So then you just press tab. Show docker title bars is an option I have only found within the like this block up here. And what it does is it hides all of these extra buttons that you don't need once you have them set up like this. And what we can do after we do that is we can just go into configure toolbars, go back here, brushes and stuff, and then just hide this. And then our, our bars are permanently like set up like that. Now we're gonna go into settings. Settings has a lot of stuff in it. So let's do it. So for window, you'll notice that we have this little bar up here. In order to hide that, we can click sub windows and what that will do is it will hide the bar and it will just put it up here next to the little X icon. And I also like to set the window background to something much, much darker, kind of like, um, kind of like Procreate. And then I also like to use a custom interface font. Um, I think it was Segu, Sego UI. So if we click OK, you'll now see that it made this like little icon if we just maximize now the bar is gone and if you want to like see all of your different pieces you just click that um i don't know why it didn't update the background well i'm gonna stop recording real quick and then get back to it all right i found it it was under display it's the canvas border color what you want to do is you want to set this to dark if you want it to be dark and it should automatically do it when i click apply like that. That is how you change the color of the background and now you'll see that we have this background and also this background. Here. Next thing we want to do is display again, which is what we were just in. Display and we want to go to canvas or miscellaneous and click hide canvas scroll bars and that will hide these scroll bars here which we don't need if we know how to use the keyboard which is control space or space to move or just like touch screen we're going to go to canvas only settings and we're going to hide everything everything but the toolbars so when we now hit tab it should keep this up here which is like our high usage bar because it's essentially changing our brush size and our opacity pop-up palette also is a big one to change max number of brush preset i think i put it down 36 is the max you can't go higher than 36 oh you can and then this is going to be dependent on what display you're using so your palette size i think i had mine at like almost 500 yeah i had mine at 526 and then the selector size at 219. this is based off of your monitor size so if you have like a 1080p monitor it's gonna be much smaller than this. If you see here, now we have almost all the brushes. Let me see. Yeah, so now we have more brushes, layers. I don't know why the tab freaks the heck out either. That's, that's another Krita bug. We have everything but the, the color setup now. So the color setup, if you remember earlier, we installed a custom Krita theme, but to use the theme creator, you're gonna go to scripts, theme creator and then it will pop up with this little dialogue and you'll be able to customize everything every sort of the theme you want like if I wanted to change the window background 
to a different color like uh, this highlighted neon green. I'm not going to do that. And you can change everything. I mean, I kind of like the setup as it already is. I do think I could change the selection color so it stands out a little bit more. I think I am actually going to do that because I don't mind having a tad bit of color. So you can change it how you like. This is the part of the video where you can customize it. And as you can see here, it does hide this show dockers thing. So that's kind of one of the, the broken parts of this. It's going to show up here, but it's not actually going to be consistent. So do with that what you will. It is a little finicky sometimes, but that's it. Pretty simple. Actually, not that simple. It's a little complicated. Krita's very all over the place. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe and I will try to make more content like it. Alternatively, if you really like my content, you can subscribe to my news newsletter. It's on my website, ekpap.com. And there's like a little button that says like, stay updated. And I'll send you updates about art and videos and game projects, all that. Also, I should, by the time you watch this video, maybe have my store set up, onesin.shop. We are going to sell embroidered cotton t-shirts and other design products. So if that is done by the time this video is up, check it out as well. It's also on my website, ekpap.com. I'll talk to you later. And I hope you have a great day. And drink water. Go outside.